Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day today. Wherever you are, thank you so much for stopping by and checking out my channel. Please do go and explore my playlist. Hit the playlist tab, you'll see videos that I have categorized there, or you're free to listen to my videos as they are uploaded. I wanna talk with you guys about being sure and certain in your walk with God. Please understand that it is a journey. I can sense and feel, and I even experience it myself, that there are times that things can be tiring and very discouraging, and sometimes you may question yourself. There may be challenges and things that you go through, and you have questions. I have had questions. You know, I recently, as when I woke up, there were just some things on my heart, and I really expressed those things to the Lord of how I was feeling about certain things, and really the things that I had questions on. And one thing that I would tell you, I have a strong resolve in my heart that no matter what I may feel, whether it's negative or, or you know, I, I have some doubts, I never doubt who God is. I never had doubt who God is. I'm going to doubt me before I doubt God. And all I could ask God during these times is to just really keep me and to, uh, I just bring my concerns to him. I just do. There are a lot of decisions and things that I'll be making and have made. And sometimes I'm like, God, is, is this the direction you want me to go in? Uh, I'm telling you. <laughs> but with it all being said and done, I put it in God's hand. hands. And what I want to encourage you all to do, guys, you have to have this resolve. A lot of times when you're going through things in your life, you're going to want to um, reach out to people, which there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes you want to try to get confirmation or validation or you want people to be on your side or to confirm that what you're doing is right. But I strongly believe that we're in these times where we have to walk the walk. We have to walk that trail with God and we have to make our mistakes, get up, walk, wake up with that mud on us you know, where you're falling or you're just not there or you're, you're walking slow. And every step of the way, you have to ask God, Father, guide me, lead me. Guide me, lead me, show me. I told you, and I mean this, and something that I've learned over time is that the Bible and the Word of God is a landmark. It is a landmark. It is something that is a point of reference for us. You can look in the Word of God and you can see how other people overcame. We can learn the lessons from other people who wanted to do what they wanted to do. We also have examples of the Son of God coming and walking on this earth and how he lived. He did not come glorious. He did not land on the planet, landed like Iron Man. He did not descend from the sky and with a host of angels because you know if he came like that people would be following him okay they'll be on him like white on rice but it will all be conditional because why their eyes saw all the amazing things so he came as a regular person born of the body and grew up just like we did and you know there are times i'm like lord why didn't you come down just like come see walking out the sky you know but I believe it was for us. We have to see and understand that he could, if he could do it, he, well, he can do it. So to show us that it's possible to walk the walk, because even though he was, is a son of God, he did not come down as in all his glory. He came down natural so he could feel all the things that we would feel. To show it's, it's, it's natural. It, it, we can do this. And we have to also realize that everything that God, th that Jesus went through is not in the Bible. It's not all recorded there. I remember reading, it was in one of the New Testament scriptures. It was also, I saw it in one of the Old Testament scriptures as well as the New. And it tells us how it's impossible to have that many volumes to, you know, to contain everything that scene or everything about God, it's not possible. So the Bible is our landmark. It's something that we should really read and look at. But at the same time, with that being said, not but, and at the same time, when you read that, you have to understand that you are now 
your Matthew. Your life is now your Mark, your Luke, your John, your Acts, your Romans, your Joshua, your Judges. These are these individuals, they walk the walk, they talk the talk, they got their whoopings fluff, been flogged, dragged, tortured, killed, okay? Now, it's our turn to walk. So we, depending on what part of the world you're in, you can be imprisoned. Other parts, you won't. It'll just be social castigation and ostracization, uh, losing your family, walking alone, being being at the, you know the enemy of the church all these different things but nevertheless we have to remember that the disciples did this before us and what's in the bible is not just a, a it's not a bedtime story it's not oh that's so nice and you just walk out and then we we fall apart when we face things and that's why jesus gave the the example of the 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 seed the sower sows the seed right some fell on good ground, some fell on thorny ground, some fell on on the wayside, all that. And, and then others fell on good ground because a lot of times we can hear the word, we can hear the songs, we can sing along, we can get excited. But then when life begins to happen and things happen, yeah, the cares of the world can choke out what we were just being all excited about. And it's something that happens. So when that happens, guys, and you see that, and I, it's happened to me before, you know, things have happened. And then I'm like, you know what? <laughs> so that's when I have to realize, okay, I heard the word of God, but obviously there's some stony ground somewhere in here because then when the cares of the world happen, when life happened, then I'm like, oh, oh, no. Okay. So, but then there's good ground, right? Where you realize, okay, you can call, you can catch yourself and realize that, all right, I, I'm tripping. I, I'm not. It's okay to feel, guys. All right. It's okay to be upset. So long as you can come around and just be like, but your will be done, God. I understand this. I'm not going to leave your side. And so, guys, that's why we just have to hold on to God. This is why we have to trust God to guide us and to lead us on this journey. Okay. A lot of times people are being really caught up in religion. I did a video about that. And I feel that when people came up with religion, maybe there was a good purpose in it, but it has become a lucrative business. And it's also become almost like borderline to a cult, if not that in some cases. And people begin, you know, slowly God begins to fade out and people are thinking about a man or a woman. They're thinking they're the Moses. They're they're the new Joshua's to take us, but no, no, no. Jesus came. He's he came as the ultimate sacrifice, and now he has tore away the veil and he's the mediator. So it is very important, guys, that you keep a level head. Otherwise, you're gonna be so busy, busy with church and doing all this stuff that you lose focus. You will be the you will be at every look if the church had a PTA you're on it right you're gonna be doing all this stuff but you realize you 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 are no match for temptation you you be doing all this stuff you're on the choir you sing till you go hoarse you still got anger problems you're still cheating on your wife you're still cheating on your husband you're still going to work late guys you, you have to understand that being a believer in God has it's more than just harping about him. There's a lot of people that's always harping about God. You got the God shirt on. You have the God bumper sticker. You got the God tumbler. You know what I mean? You're playing the godly music, but your life is ungodly. You're just rude. Being late for work is ungodly. Go to work on time. Stop starting trouble. Printing out them church pamphlets of the job is ungodly. Do your job. You're not doing God any favors. You're robbing people because you're being paid for that. If you are being honest, go and say, you know what, at this moment I'm not, why is it that you say, you don't go up and say, oh, you know, I'm using the, the printer to print out the church pamphlets right now. I'm not working. I'm not doing my job right now because you know that there'll be consequences, right? And because you want to get paid. So you will still be getting paid and you're not doing your job. Do you think God is pleased? Let's not ever keep those lines blurred where we think, well, because I am printing out church pamphlets at work on the clock, then God is going to turn a blind eye. When you're at work, you need to do your job. When you're at work, God expects you to do your job. And see, these are the things that's why people will overcomplicate it because when you're religious and you're doing all these things, you're so busy being religious that you're not realizing that a part of being godly is following the rules, following the laws, 
knowing when there are laws that is really infringing on your beliefs and knowing when to speak and when to to speak with the wisdom of God, not out your feelings and land an impact. And then also knowing that it's in your everyday behavior in which you're going to shed a light where people are going to look and say, you know what? There's something about him. There's something about her. This is all a journey for us, guys. It really is. And if you understand it is in your everyday living, if you understand that you don't have to get up every day and always going out asking people, if if you die today, <laughs> you know, if they die today, they may get in and you don't. It's not that. Be polite. Put the soda back where you got it from in the store. People are not understanding it's in the little things. When I was growing up, every Saturday morning, I watched, car I watched karate. Not Saturday morning, Saturday evenings, because I grew up in Brooklyn. So Saturday evening, about 3 o'clock, karate movies will come on. Da -da -da -da. Me and my brothers were sitting there. We were watching karate movies all afternoon, right? I think from like, I think it comes on at three, three to about five. And every time the Shaolin masters, they want to be a master, everything. But you know what they had to do? They had to do the basic things first. So they were sweeping and they were washing and they had to do these things that seemed very menial. But you realize those little tasks, those little menial things that they were doing was all a part of their training, all a part of the training before they went on to more advanced fighting techniques. And I believe it's the same thing with us as believers that a lot of times it's really in our basic things, right? The basic things, being kind, being polite, going to work, being responsible, doing what you're supposed to do how you are at home with your family, whether you help your wife out or not, whether you are kind to your husband or not. You know, I understand that there's situations where you have that husband or wife from hell. I'm not telling you that someone that's abusive and disrespectful and mistreating you. I'm not telling you that you are subject to someone who is abusing you and abusing you and your children. I understand that there are situations where there's an exception, okay? But all I'm simply saying is in cases where people, they're just mean, they're just rude, right? You're going to take hot meals down to your pastor, but you're not going to do it for your husband or your family, or you're going to help the pastor's wife get out of her car. You run out there with an umbrella for her. Get yourself wet to get her things out the trunk. Tell her it's okay. You escort her to the door and soak your suit and park her car, but you leave your wife outside with with the children and everything and struggling and because you're off. These are the little things, guys, the little tasks and things that matters. And when you do these things, when we behave right and when we can see the areas in which we're coming up short and be honest, we got about it as we grow. OK, what's going to happen? God can now advance us just like the Shaolin master. He will he will he will he will slowly, he can see that his student is now, the apprentice is ready to go into the next level. And guys, when we do that, then people will get curious about you. What is it about you? You know, they're not here starting trouble, doing all these different things. What's going on? And then they'll come to you and they're going to talk to you. You're going to find people come to you about deep things. And that's going to open up a door. You see, a lot of times God will open up the door where you get to witness, where you get to tell people about the Lord. You, you get to tell them, and it's nothing that you're forcing on them. You understand what I'm saying? So with that, guys, at this point, I think it's really important that it's not about theatrics. It's not about following a certain set of behaviors that you feel is appropriate for you to be a Christian but rather asking God to really change your heart and to really help you to stay the course and to help you to be an example and not allow anybody, any religion, anybody to take you, to separate you from God. You know, the word of God says, can, can, can war, can famine, can the pestilence, can anything take me from the love of God? But in today's society, guess who can take you from God? Whatever your pastor said, whatever first lady in, 
and her, her croony say, whatever the prophet said. And you have to be to a point, guys, where you're like, no, you will not take me from God. My relationship with God surpasses that of a prophet who's came to be a prophet trying to tell me I'm a bad person and I'm a horrible person or a so-called pastor that's trying to tell me I'm hopeless and God doesn't want me. And this old skin out first lady and her, you know, terry cloth booty wearing cronies that are playing games with you and telling you that you are worth nothing because you sinned and you understand it's very, very dangerous. I told you the pirate prophets, they'll get their little friends, call them up. I got this person here. I, they said this to me. And then the little pirate prophets from down the lane come up to the church and give their little lies, right? And it's so sad because you be in these churches and these people are lying. And they just had a conversation with a pastor about you. And then they're given these false prophecies. And the whole church pointing at you with their eyes fully dilated. Oh, oh, kill her. Get her, Lord. You know, get him, Lord. <laughs> You've got to be beyond that. There is no one on this planet. I tell you unequivocally, there is no one on this planet that has the authority or can tell me that God does not love me, that God does not want me. They cannot dictate and tell me whether God is going to accept me or not. They are not in a position to tell me that I am not able, I'm not worthy. I don't care. You don't count. You know what I'm saying? And I am on that because there is danger in that. There's so many people who have fallen away, who have lost their way, who are somewhere based out, dead even in some cases because of this meanness that comes out from the church where these individuals will feel like they're the mouthpiece of God and will destroy you. No one has that authority. If God has something to tell me, he will tell me. I'm not saying that we cannot listen to instruction from one another. I'm not saying that we cannot correct one another. But with that being said, I will think about what you've said. I have the authority and the power to go before God with what you have said and I will sit before him and decide if this is right or not. And there are other things I can be like, oh, no, I don't think so. Because I have a close enough relationship with God to tell you right down the spot, I do not accept. And that stuff's going to go like water off the back of a duck. You have to have that certainty in God. Whether you feel like you're the leper, whether you feel like you're the woman with the issue of blood, whether you feel like you're exactly as too short whether you feel like you were Nicodemus sliding into Jesus at night coming in to talk to him and he was one of the Pharisees. He came to him at night because he didn't want his Pharisee friends to see him. Whether you were the woman at the well, whatever you may be, you may be the centurion soldier who what came from the Romans who had they believe in several gods. Whoever you are, they cannot, people do not put it in anyone's hand today to be able to tell you whether, whether you're worthy or not. You will not tell me that. If God decides to put me in the depths of hell, he will be just in doing so. But it will be because he did it. Because, not because I'm listening to you or you or you or you with your nonsense. Because people sometimes, they get religion on the brain and they get crazy. And what it is, they're so used to being in front of people and hearing the hurrah, yeah, ha, they get nuts. I tell you, you may know certain things about me, but only God has the blueprints and the fine prints, and he's only going to share that with me. That's why he made me unique with my own DNA. There's only one of me on this planet, and I can only be identified by my fingerprint. And that's because you are, you mean something to God. He knows your voice. He knows your cry. He knows everything about you. So it is important that you do not allow religious crazy eyes fully dilated people to try to tell you who you're not and what you're you're not worthy and we don't want you here and when they ostracize you you better realize that God is trying to pull you to him so go to him go home go to the house and don't go back over there because sometimes God is trying to save you. He's trying to wake you up and you're so scared that, oh, let me in, let me in, let me in. You're knocking on the door of the big bad wolf. God is like, come on, I'm at the house. Have that confidence because I have it. And when I tell you 
that I will almost cut somebody out if they're trying to tell me that God doesn't love me and trying to tell me that I'm not of, that he's not my father. No, you're not going to tell me that because my experience with him is so real and has been so real. I'm not saying I'm always having this awesome experience, but I know who my father is. He has been with me in my darkest places. So there's no way. He will lead and guide me and show me the right way. And he may use people. He used each and every one of us to be uh, 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 maybe advised or whatever. But we are not the final say so. We're not God. We're merely vessels. No higher than the donkey that he used to speak. And if you understand that, guys, you'll not be misled. You will not be. You will not be led astray. Nor will you be this random Christian rando, this groupie trying to get approved by man. Let's take this walk together. Please take the hand of the Father. He has not forgotten you. God bless.